Now we're going to take a quick look at particles. If we open the schematic, go to add effects, and go to render, you'll see that we have particles. Now all of these selections over here are actually the same node. They're just different standard presets. And to give an idea of what they would look like from the start, just got a couple over here. We click on render. I've just attached a couple of images to the particle. And if you click on render, you'll see there's a red bar at the bottom. And those are the frames which have not been cached. So the first time you try and render out a sequence of images with particles, it will cache the frames. And then the next time, it should be able to give you real-time playback. Okay. Okay, it's now cached and we can play it. This would be another effect, which is a default effect. We'll just cache it and then play it. Okay. And that would be that effect, which doesn't work very well. So I'll just close the schematic. The problem with the effect which I've just shown is that the timing of the images affects the timing of the particles. So if we reframe the same set of images on fours, we should then have a far better effect. And there we have that effect. Now we're going to create a basic particle effect. So I'll just go down to render particles and get my particles node. And we go down the timeline and turn on render. You will see it is rendering particles and that they are going downwards. Double click on the particle node. First thing we'll see is the source parameter, which will basically define where the particles come from. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to change the source par parameters and we can use an image to control these, but at this point we're going to Control them manually with the controls in the viewport. I'm just going to select my particle in the X sheet and make all of these parameters constant throughout the entire scene so that it does not keyframe any changes for my source because I do not want to change the way the particles are emitted at the source of the simulation in the scene. I'm also going to go to frame 1 and I'm going to see, set the starting frame at negative 10. That way it is not going to show the start of the simulation, but it is going to start with a already fully formed simulation, and I'm going to set the birth rate down to 1, because for what I'm going to be doing, it is um, not going to be requiring a huge amount of particles. It's also easier to, um, often easier, to 
do a particle simulation with fewer particles when you start and get the feel for the simulation without having to cache through large amounts of particles. Then we'll take a look at the birth parameters. The speed will determine both the speed at which the particles are, are emitted, um, but it will also determine the direction. The speed over here will determine the speed, and you can do that over a reasonably large range. Um, so to just stop marking them and just play over that little range. You'll see particles flying everywhere at random. At this point, for what I'm going to be doing, I'm just going to set the speed to zero because for what I'm going to be doing, I am not going to want the particles to be moving at all. Then we've got the mass and the orientation and size. I want to have the size vary, but if we take a look at this, you're going to see that you do not really see much information about the size. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to this column over here and I'm just going to draw myself a image to give me a basic idea of size I'm looking at. And I'm just going to plug this image into the texture of the particles to delete that source and I now have an idea of the size and what I'm going to want to do is I am going to want to create a perspective effect with the particles further away from you being smaller particles close to me being larger order to make of my perspective effects I'm basically going to use a gradient um, so I'm just going to get a linear gradient just going to rotate it which is not what we were trying to have happen so instead of rotating it like that I'm going to go over here and I'm going to create a peg and I'm going to do the ro rotation on the peg instead of the gradient which will allow me a far closer effect to what I'm looking for a little bit. Position it. Then I'm going to use that in my control port and I'm going to use control image number one to determine the size of my particles here and Next, I am going to just add a little bit of noise to my gradient to give a little bit more variation. So, 
I'm just going to get Perlin noise because it's pretty much standard. We can just see what it will look like over here. Um, and what I'm going to do with that Perlin noise is I'm going to multiply it by my original gradient. Yeah. Just the intensity. just give me a little bit more natural variation on my sizes than a straight gradient will. And go back to the particles node and what we're going to then want next is we're going to want to work with our lifetime which is going to define how long the particle will be in the scene. In which case I'm going to set it at about about 24 frames. Um, we're not actually going to use this in the final version of the scene. Just fix a gradient here. Not actually going to use it in the final version, but um, we will just test to see if this is working. Okay, now that it's cast, I can see if it's giving anything near what I want. That should be good enough for the purposes of this tutorial. Okay, so I'm just going to hide all of these. We're just going to create a new level. I will make it 25 frames. I'm going to step it onto these twos. Just increment it as twos. We want it as a vector level. for now and we'll just start at frame one give ourselves something to work with thirteen Side and we'll just do some adjustments on the thickness of these images. Just a little bit thicker. Go 
is the last one. Select the line. I want to make it as thin as possible. And then we're going to generate in between for these rather than animating everything. So we will just select them and we'll click on the in between and ease out, which would work for this one. And then the next two, which we want to make linear in betweens. So then here, yeah. and I'm going to ease out here. And should then have my effect. Okay. I'm just going Select all of those and drag them into the scene. Just delete that one. And I'm just going to retime these. And then we're going to go back to the particle simulation. And we are going to Remove the original texture and we are going to add in our new texture and that that's cached. Let's click and you're going to see we have random ovals popping up. To change this we will go back to source and if we take a look here at animation you'll see it's on hold frame which will basically take a random frame from your animated section and just have that as a static frame throughout the simulation. What we will do over here is we will do column, which will play through that column from start to finish. And then what we will also do is we should set the lifetime to use the column for the duration of the lifetime, which should allow the column's lifespan to be dependent on the length of the animation rather than the lifetime sliders and we will try and catch that And when we play through that, we will see that I have somehow managed to make a mess out of my speed, which I will set to zero again. And then recache. Back, we have the starts for a quick and nasty rain effect.